Okay, so very good afternoon, all of you. Today we have our 58th uh, Ananta Krishna Colloquium. We have a distinguished speaker with us, and we apologize this is online this time because the speaker is in Austria. So let me take the privilege to introduce uh, his Dr. Vidyut Vikash Goswami, who is uh, alumni of IITM. He did PhD here. So, uh, reading a few of his ex his past experience, his, uh, um, he has completed PhD at IITM, and then he did postdoctoral research in various places, uh, especially in Victoria, Canada, and in New York University, Abu Dhabi, and then uh, Yonsei University in South Korea. And now he is uh, currently at uh, Astra, Austria. So uh, his basic research interest is in Indian monsoon, uh, basically, and he has done uh, very interesting research on uh, in monsoon and coupled uh, modeling and uh, intra-seasonal oscillations, etc. So uh, with this short introduction, I invite uh, Dr. Vidyut to um, make presentation of today's uh, Ananda Krishna Colloquium. So Vidyut, uh, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Binu, uh, for uh, the introducing me and uh, welcome you all to this uh, 58th Professor Ananta Krishnan Colloquium. And uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Minister of Earth Sciences for organizing this and of course IITM. Uh, I was just talking, it would have been much better if I was in person at IITM. It's always nice to be at IITM and uh, uh, so this is the talk uh, title of the talk that I'm gonna present uh, today pre-monsoon rainfall over northeast India a signal of false alarms of Indian monsoon droughts and uh, uh, this although it's a solo project that uh, recently got published in uh, Geophysical Research Letters, GRL. Uh, but I have many people to thank uh, for this. Of course, I'd like to thank uh, Institute of Science and Technology Austria and my current group uh, team leader, Professor Carolyn Muller, for the support provided to conduct this research. And when it comes to pre monsoon rainfall over northeast, India. Uh, so in the background image that you can see actually are the clouds over northeast India that I took uh, a few years back when I was uh, flying. I, I uh, went home in the sun and uh, when the flight took off, I took this picture. So this picture sets the uh, stage for this talk actually nicely. And uh, uh, this colloquium actually uh, preparing for a talk for uh, we don't really get opportunity to read about uh, grades of our um, domain. So because this was an Antakrishnan colloquium, I got motivated to uh, read about uh, Professor Anantakrishnan. And this was interesting that I found uh, uh, an introduction of Professor Anantakrishnan in IITM uh, website and uh, I was actually intrigued to see that he also did some work on Himalayas, Tibet and adjoining areas that was actually way back in 1963 for some defense purposes. So I think uh, uh, this actually is very close to what I'm going to present, although this was as the title says, his work was probably mostly on uh, climatology and uh, by the the research or the work that I'm going to present is slightly different, but still I found this is probably uh, close to what I'm going to present today. And uh, so this would be the outline of my talk, uh, pre-monsoon rainfall over northeast India. Uh, I'll present a brief background. And uh, again, I mean, this, uh, this research basically, uh, as you might imagine, got published in GRL. So it, it is uh, in terms of uh, research uh, results or figures produced in the research are quite limited, four uh, figures. So I was asked this 
uh, to prepare a presentation lasting for 45 minutes. I might not use that whole 45 minutes actually because this might be a shorter presentation. And, uh, and the whole motive of this work is to touch a subject which I believe has been researched relatively less compared to monsoon rainfall that to uh, and monsoon rainfall has been studied widely over central India, but I think over northeast India there is relatively less study and pre monsoon even lesser. So I'll try to uh, put that background uh, know a little bit more about pre monsoon rainfall over northeast India and then I'll put that in context of uh, how it is connected to monsoon rainfall over central India, which is the sole purpose of uh, this research that how these two things are linked and how uh, pre monsoon rainfall over northeast India can be used to understand monsoon rainfall over central India. And uh, then I would try to understand or, or uh, the mechanism, how they are linked, some large scale uh, forces large scale circulation interacting with the mountains in northeast India. And then over the course of the presentation, I'll try to explain why I use the term false alarm in the title slide or in the title of the paper that I published. So uh, this is what the seasonal mean rainfall over northeast India would look like in during March, April, May in your uh, left of your screen. And when I said Northeast India, it's basically the region that I have highlighted by the yellow box. Uh, it's the seven states, eight states now in Northeast India. And Central India, this audience already is, I guess, well uh, versed with the definition of Central India. It's a box which uh, describes the central part of India represented by this uh, red red box. And immediately you can see there is lots of rain uh, already happening in northeast India during March, April and May. And to put things in perspective of monsoon, uh, in your right hand side I have plotted the fraction of rainfall uh, during pre-monsoon compared to monsoon. And again you can see uh, over the central part of India, it's uh, very less, like four, four to five percent rainfall during pre-monsoon uh, compared to monsoon times. But over northeast India, it's actually 25, 30 percent of the rainfall uh, happening in pre-monsoon times compared to monsoon season. So whole uh, motive of showing this figure is to convince you that a lot of rainfall takes place over Northeast India during pre-monsoon time of March, April and May. And uh, another way of looking at it is to plot the annual cycle of rainfall, which is in your left hand side in the top panel. Uh, I'm showing the rainfall annual cycle, which you already well know uh, over central India. So there is this abrupt increase of rainfall during March, uh, uh, during uh, June. So this red dotted vertical lines actually show breakpoints of this time series and you can see there is this sudden uh, increase in rainfall which which we all know as the monsoon onset and there is this monsoon withdrawal which is relatively more gradual than the onset and below you can see this uh, annual um, rainfall cycle over northeast India and the onset is much more gradual and the whole uh, uh, length of the rainy season is much wider compared to central India. And these breakpoint lines, the red lines are actually statistical outcome and they don't really seem to uh, mean anything physically because this red vertical line during uh, May and June uh, is, doesn't really seem like a breakpoint. It's a very gradual onset which again means that uh, uh, indicates uh, the rainfall during uh, pre-monsoon season. And to put things in perspective, uh, so how much this rainfall might mean for 
precipitation over central India during monsoon or monsoon rainfall in general. To uh, bring that out, I have plotted in your right hand side is a fraction of rainfall over this northern box over India. So this northern box is uh, actually same as the northern box, which is used to compute the troposphere temperature gradient index, which uh, from Xavier et al. 2007. So in modern monsoon theory, we know that monsoon is maintained or sustained by the troposphere temperature or heating, diabetic heating due to huge monsoon rainfall over this northern box. So one way of uh, identifying the contribution from northeast uh, Indian rainfall in this troposphere heating would be to explain how much of the total rainfall in this uh, northern box is explained by the rainfall over northeast India. And this uh, red line, uh, red curve actually says that, and you can see it explains uh, a non-negligible part of the total precipitation over the northern box, so which is uh, more than 10% and actually it peaks uh, during May. So this 150 uh, day, which marks the start of June, uh, even before that, even in May, the more than 10% of the total precipitation is explained uh, by precipitation over northeast India. So what it indicates is it is it has the potential to impact monsoon by impacting the diabetic heating over this northern box. So uh, that means if we can understand uh, what dictates the rainfall over northeast India might give us some clue about how it can in in turn impact the monsoon rainfall over central India or uh, uh, monsoon rainfall in general. And this huge rainfall, uh, what traditional knowledge tells us that during pre-monsoon, the rainfall is uh, the rainfall that we see over India is uh, typically occurs during af uh, afternoon due to intense pre-monsoon solar heating. So to uh, look at how this rainfall, uh, like whether this rainfall is actually coming due to intense solar heating or because we know that Northeast India is uh, has a complex terrain. So whether it is dominated by rainfall that happens during afternoon, I plotted the uh, diurnal variation of rainfall. So this is trim uh, data plotted for three hours. And I have just zoomed over the 5.30 uh, p.m. local time plot. And uh, you can see over um, other regions, especially where we see more pre-monsoon rainfall. Uh, uh, if you remember the plot that I showed in the first slide, that there is some pre-monsoon rainfall in the Western Ghats and uh, in the east, northeastern uh border of india so th those rainfalls actually peak during afternoon which supports the uh, notion that these rainfall is probably or most likely is due to intense uh solar heating but in northeast india i although i have zoomed only over uh, only for 5 30 pm local time but if you closely look at these different panels then you would uh, uh, see that there is no clear diurnal peak of rainfall happening uh, over northeast India during pre-monsoon, which suggests that it is not uh, probably not only the diurnal uh, 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 solar heating that that uh, that can explain the pre-monsoon rainfall that is happening over northeastern India. And another uh, interesting. Uh, result or another interesting observation of pre monsoon rainfall over northeast India is these rainfall actually come in much longer spell. If it was just isolated thunderstorms or intense solar heating, then we would expect them to happen uh, in single days or uh, a spell of one or two days. But what this figure shows is I computed 
a spell uh, a spell would be defined as uh, length of continuous length of uh, rainy days and then i cal calculated the total amount of uh, rainfall during those spells and also length of those rainy spells and i plotted the spell length in the x axis and spell strength in the y axis so there is uh, the red or or the points or the blocks which are close to origin would be the events which happened during uh, within within 24 hours and as we go towards the left hand side those are the spells which had uh, longer uh, lifetime and as we go up in the y-axis then we uh, these means uh, the stronger rainy spells lasting for a longer duration or long uh, lasting for many days so the top panel shows it for uh, the contrast between northeast india pre-monsoon rainfall minus central india pre-monsoon rainfall and all the blocks are red meaning during pre-monsoon time over northeast india we get much more long and strong rainy spells compared to central india in pre-monsoon and when we come to the uh, plot below then we see a lot of uh, blue along with red which means during monsoon central india also experiences long and strong rainy spells which we can associate uh, associate uh, well with the intraseasonal oscillations so which which means that northeast india during pre monsoon experiences rainfall behavior which uh, which is similar to rainfall behavior of our central india during monsoon which indicates there might be a large scale uh, forcing associated with and uh, only uh, diurnal solar heating cannot explain the rainfall fully. So to summarize the behavior of pre-monsoon rainfall over northeast India as the different aspects, as we have already seen, there is a lot of rain and it has the potential to uh, impact uh, monsoon in general. So that indicates the context that if we can find a relationship between pre-monsoon rainfall over northeast India and rain monsoon rainfall over central India, then we can use the information of this rainfall happening over northeast India during pre-monsoon. Would be uh, we can utilize that information for prediction purpose for seasonal monsoon uh, rainfall over India or central India to be precise. And then also we see there is not a clear diurnal peak and the rainy spells are much longer and stronger. As I mentioned already, that indicates uh, a large scale mechanism uh, responsible for this rainfall over northeast India. So that is the second part where we will try to investigate uh, a mechanism behind this rainfall. So in search of the statistical relationship between Northeast India pre-monsoon rainfall and Central India monsoon rainfall, uh, I plotted this 11 year running correlation between Central India monsoon and Northeast India pre-monsoon rainfall. And what immediately catches our uh, observation is there is a multi-decadal kind of oscillation happening in this relationship and the correlation actually uh, these blue dotted lines indicate the significant level of correlation for uh, these uh, these uh, the correlation values calculated and we can see for there are decades when this correlation is actually significant and positive so this is somewhat uh, uh, intriguing because traditionally we know that Northeast India rainfall and Central India rainfall are negatively related. But this correlation analysis tells us that the pre-monsoon rainfall actually is positively related with a monsoon rainfall over Central India. So whenever there is more rainfall over Northeast India or excess rainfall over Northeast India, we can expect more rainfall over Central India. 
And another intriguing feature is I plotted different time series to understand this behavior, but one time series that stands out is the Northeast India uh, mean rainfall or total rainfall, uh, which is plotted in thick green line, which is the Northeast India pre monsoon rainfall 11 year running mean. And this correlation uh, between Central India and Northeast India rainfall actually uh, matches well with the Northeast India rainfall alone, which means that whenever there is a uh, positive correlation, it is related with more rainfall or excess rainfall over Northeast India. And these uh, motivated me to look at uh, what drives the Northeast India rainfall. Because if I can understand what drives Northeast India rainfall, then I can also try to investigate further what drives this positive correlation between pre monsoon Northeast India rainfall and monsoon rainfall over central India. And uh, yeah, this is the period actually I focused in the study because of uh, availability of data. So if I go back in time, then the earlier period of positive correlation, uh, I get less reliable data. So this this is the period I will be focusing on later in my analysis. So um, yeah, and and uh, to to add more uh, robustness into the status in, in in the statistics, I actually checked uh, uh, the, the years when Northeast India pre monsoon rainfall was above mean or uh, five st a half standard deviation above mean. So I, I checked for different categories during this uh, during this period highlighted by this uh, oval shaped. And what I found is actually uh, interesting because during those uh, during that period highlighted by the uh, positive correlation between Northeast India pre monsoon rainfall and Central India pre uh, monsoon rainfall, when Northeast India monsoon, uh, pre monsoon rainfall is above one standard deviation, I found six such years, and in all those years, Central India monsoon rainfall was above minus one standard deviation, which means that Central India monsoon was a non drought. So uh, here I'm uh, considering drought as uh, uh, years which are less than minus one standard deviation, which is the usual practice we do in our studies. And when Northeast India monsoon rainfall is above 0.75 standard deviation of its mean, I found eight such years and all those eight years Central India monsoon rainfall was actually above minus one standard deviation. Even when I consider 0.5 standard deviation above mean rainfall for Northeast India pre-monsoon season, I found 11 such years and all those 11 years, Central India monsoon rainfall was above minus one standard deviation of its mean. And uh, when Northeast India, so I, I got greedy and I checked what if Northeast uh, pre monsoon rainfall is just above its mean. And I found 17 years like that. And uh, out of it, 13 years were actually Central India monsoon rainfall above minus one standard deviation. So what this means is when Northeast India pre monsoon rainfall is above its mean, very rarely Central India monsoon is below one, minus one standard deviation. So which is basically the primary uh, uh, finding of this, of this study. And this was actually, uh, I have to thank one reviewer who was very pushy regarding what actually it means for uh, Central India monsoon because uh, what I presented in the previous analysis was 11 year running mean, which might uh, show some uh, statistics, but actually when it comes to interannual variability or uh, rainfall for a particular season, 
what are the actual numbers and these numbers actually verified uh, the positive correlation that I found uh, in the previous analysis. So then the big question was what drives Northeast India pre-monsoon rainfall? Because that probably would also give us the um, uh, understanding of why uh, when Northeast India uh, pre-monsoon rainfall is positive, why the correlation between Northeast and Central India rainfall uh, becomes positive, uh, which otherwise during monsoon season is a negative correlation as we know from previous literature. So to uh, understand what drives pre-monsoon um, rainfall over Northeast India, uh, I took the usual um, um, diagnostic of taking uh, taking the pre-monsoon Northeast India rainfall time series and computed correlation of sea surface temperature during the same season at different grip points over the globe. And this, uh, this is what the pattern looked like. We have a significant cold anomalies in the Northern Pacific and uh, in the equatorial Pacific, we have a positive anomaly. So this pattern, uh, I call it a picture of settled statistics because this statistics uh, from the statistics that I showed in the previous slide is pretty robust, but it's a picture of puzzled physics because this pattern, as we know, is uh, associated with drought monsoon years. And that's actually where I got uh, inspired to put the name false alarm, as we will see more in detail in the coming slides. And this pattern is, by the way, not new. So there is this study by Abida et al. in 2019, Abida Chaudhary, who also analyzed the Northeast India monsoon rainfall. Uh, they didn't look at pre-monsoon, they looked at monsoon rainfall, and they also found a similar sea surface temperature pattern which favored rainfall over Northeast India. And uh, so why I call it a puzzled uh, physics. So if we take all the uh, drought years and uh, SST uh, uh, anomalies and all the flood years compose it and I uh, subtract them, then I get this image of uh, which looks El Nino uh, like pattern. And we know that uh, this uh, El Nino or uh, El Nino pattern actually uh, opposes uh, monsoon rainfall or monsoon droughts are associated with El Nino pattern. And there is, in fact, study by Krishnamurti and Krishnamurti 2014, which actually says that El Nino occurred during PDO phase because PDO and El Nino especially has similar patterns. So uh, the, the El Nino SST pattern is enforced by the background PDO. And that's why during a joint PDO and El Nino phase, there is this risk of severe drought. But then in my results, I found the same pattern actually is associated with enhanced Months, uh, pre monsoon rainfall over Northeast India. And if you remember the correlation, these years of excess rainfall over Northeast India is positively connected to monsoon rainfall over Central India. So the same pattern, which actually was argued to be associated with severe drought, now I find that the same, uh, this pattern is actually associated with non droughts. So this is uh, th that is why I call it the false alarm, because looking at the SST pattern over Pacific, we might expect a uh, drought over Central India, but from my analysis, I find that these years are actually non-droughts. So I did some further robustness check and uh, I actually calculated all different years and found for different uh, categories uh, when Northeast India is above 
uh, half standard deviation or 0.75 standard deviation or one standard deviation above mean. I took the all 118 years of data from 1901 to 2018 uh, of uh, from IND data, and I did all different combinations and permutations, and I found that the numbers actually are consistent with uh, the fact that Central India rainfall is actually positively correlated with uh, pre-monsoon rainfall over Northeast India. And it is uh, more likely to be a non-drought when there is excess rainfall, uh, excess pre-monsoon rainfall over the Northeast. So then comes the phase where uh, I had to understand why, why it is so, or what is actually the mechanism uh, which can actually link when Northeast India experiences excess rainfall that particular year, Central India is a non-drought, even though the signal from Pacific is a severe drought. So to find that, I compared, so in the second uh, oval, I identified all these. So this, uh, this is a busy uh, figure. It became busier and busier satisfying the reviewer uh, queries. I had actually started with the, a cleaner figure with just the green and the black lines here, as I had shown before, but then uh, over the course of completing the review, I uh, continued adding different time series and ended up uh, producing a figure which is very busy. But nonetheless, to take you through the figure, uh, the main point here is I identified the years uh, of Northeast India excess rainfall during this joint uh, phase or during the phase where uh, Central India monsoon and Northeast India pre-monsoon rainfall are positively correlated. So these blue dots are Northeast India pre-monsoon rainfall, uh, pre-monsoon excess rainfall. And for these years, uh, even though I uh, did not get any uh, Central India monsoon rainfall below minus one standard deviation, so this y-axis is standard deviation, so you don't see any any value of Central India uh, below minus one standard deviation corresponding to these blue dots. Uh, so I to 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 identify the mechanism, I separated or created rather two classes of cases. One I call true when Northeast India is excess and Central India rainfall is above zero or uh, zero in the sense above mean, which are uh, marked as by these diamond shaped uh, diamonds around these red circles. These red are Central India corresponding rainfall. And the years when Central India was actually below uh, its average, I marked these years by these square shaped markers and I uh, found four years when Northeast India monsoon was excess, uh, pre-monsoon was excess, and seven years when uh, Central India was above average and Northeast monsoon was excess. So these cases are true cases, and these square marked cases are false cases. And then probably you can imagine what I did. I just did a composite of these years, uh, composite of SST for these years, and a composite of SST for these years. And also I um, calculated different, not just SST, I calculated for different meteorological parameters. And the one I'm showing here is the conversions uh, at 850 hectopascal and 200 hectopascal. So why I'm showing this? Because this is consistent with recent results by Sharma et al. 2000, 
23, who also investigated uh, the rainfall over northeast India, and they found that the large scale circulation uh, interacts with the local topography. So what is shown here, along with divergence and shading, this pink colored uh, contour indicates the 500 meter high uh, mountains. Uh, the, uh, it actually, what is plotted here is actually geopotential height, so which we can take a proxy uh, for, uh, take as a proxy for mountains. So there is this valley, uh, and here we can see there is no, uh, there is strong convergence in the low level, and there is no significant divergence in the higher level, meaning there is this barotropic kind of convergence happening due to the interaction of the large scale with the local mountains. And that uh, creates the environment for convection. I plotted this for diabetic heating and precipitation and other variables, and uh, results are consistent that this barotropic convergence uh, due to the interaction of large scale with local orography uh, produces the rainfall. And so with this mechanism, there was, I, I call it a conclusion come confusion, because it gave me uh, some results which uh, explains my results, but at the same time, uh, uh, gives me a lot of uh, new questions as well. So one idea is to understand how this actually, uh, how this mechanism can actually lead to positive correlation between Central India monsoon and Northeast India pre-monsoon rainfall. So the large scale interacts with local mountains and it produces rainfall during pre monsoon over northeast and because it's, it produces a lot of rainfall as we had seen early in this presentation that this rainfall is capable of uh, potentially affecting the troposphere heating so if it affects the uh, troposphere heating then we can expect an earlier reversal of the troposphere temperature gradient which would mean that we should see an earlier monsoon onset in case of uh, for the true cases compared to the false cases and as uh, we indeed see actually this blue uh, line indicates the troposphere temperature gradient for the true cases and the red curve indicates the same for the false cases. And we see there is a marginal uh, earlier onset in terms of troposphere temperature gradient index for monsoon during the true cases. And uh, I, I uh, confirmed it for different thresholds. Like this is this uh, for this particular analysis, I uh, define the true and false cases for greater than uh, five standard deviation, meaning I picked only the years with Northeast India rainfall above five standard deviation. But if I change this threshold, even then the signal is robust and I do see earlier onset in case of true cases. And this is in a hypothetical state I uh, do see the results, I do see the observations consistent with what I would expect. But then uh, when I wanted to do a modeling experiment for this, it was difficult because uh, one thing, the models do not simulate the mountain rainfall uh, correctly. Also, the models are too coarse for, uh, for me to represent the mountains in the model. So I need a high resolution model and which was uh, not really within the scope during uh, when I was doing uh, this research. And another question is, why don't we see this thing happening every time when there is an El Nino and PDO occurring at the same time? So what prohibits, and, uh, prohibits it in some years? So this might be uh, due to 
the small scale of the mountains because the because they are so small uh, relative to the large scale signal subtle differences in the large scale pattern might uh, lead to uh, different responses in terms of the rainfall that we would experience but there is one uh, another interesting thing in uh, un uh, to understand this i actually plotted different years when uh, uh, North East India monsoon uh, rainfall during a joint phase. So what this uh, figure shows is the pink indicates North East India monsoon rainfall above mean and uh, this 13 indicates monsoon uh, North East India pre monsoon rainfall below mean. So I separated these different years in terms of their deviations from the mean. And you can see that. As as I go to higher and higher levels uh, in the sense that. Uh, this, for example, this one standard deviation would mean that I found only one event which was below one standard deviation. Uh, rainfall of pre monsoon, a uh, pre monsoon rainfall over northeast India, and I found six events. So, what it means is essentially that large scale uh, circulation forced by that particular uh, structure of SST anomalies over Pacific interacts constructively more often with the mountains of northeast India then uh, and that is uh, true when we go to higher deviations and the same thing is shown in terms of percentages in the in the below plot which actually tells the same thing but just in terms of percentage so uh, that gives us motivation to use the northeast india pre monsoon uh, rainfall as a predictor of central india monsoon or we can use it as one of the predictors or uh, one of the predictors to identify or to assess how much actually we can rely on the signal coming from pacific when there is a severe drought signal so I tested it using a very uh, simple linear regression model. So where I used uh, PDO and ENSO indices to predict Central India monsoon rainfall. So I used certain number of years and I trained this linear regression model for the 80% of the data and then asked it to predict the remaining 20% of the data. And when I did this, uh, when I included three indices, uh, one of uh, so one additional index would be the North East India pre monsoon information, then the model performed better. So I have not actually shown the details of the model because it's just a very simple uh, Python code for linear regression. But the information is this model could explain more values. Uh, or more variants of Central India rainfall than the model where I didn't use the North East India pre monsoon information. And uh, so this would be uh, my last but one slide. So which is which says or which summarizes the results that during a joint positive phase, which is El Nino and a positive phase of PDO, which has this cold anomalies in the northern Pacific. Uh, in those years, when there is excess rainfall over northeast India during pre monsoon, uh, these years we can rely less on the severe drought signal coming from the Pacific. Or, in other words, it's a reliable indicator, uh, hence, a fall drought alarm detector of the coming central India monsoon. And one thing which still uh, puzzling is the diversity of response of North East India pre monsoon to a joint phase. Like, how do we explain the years when North East India pre monsoon 
rainfall is not access, even when uh, PDO and ENSO are in their positive phases. So this would be something uh, to uh, think about. And also, these results are somewhat um, functions of how I define my ENSO and PDO. So these are, I didn't consider any ENSO diversity, like how uh, uh, different kind of ENSO uh, would result, uh, how, uh, would, would change the outcome of this study, because this would be critical or probably very uh, a key element in understanding why Northeast India pre-monsoon is not always, which is, which actually motivated me to look at the whole issue, which is uh, the correlation between Central India monsoon and Northeast India monsoon. And this is where, even though I'm showing this slide at the end, but this is, this was basically the starting point of this whole analysis. I looked at the correlation between Northeast India and Central India during monsoon. So in, in, uh, literature, we have seen that these are negatively correlated, but apparently the correlation is not as simple as saying simply that they're uh, just out of phase because it has, it definitely has a, a, a multi decadal kind of oscillation. And also, uh, if you look from like uh, middle of the 20th century, to current uh, to present time, then there is a definite decreasing uh, trend uh, considering the multi-decadal oscillations. So yeah, this was this was uh, this research was meant to ask more questions uh, and agitate the research uh, about Northeast India pre-monsoon rainfall, and I hope. Uh, this uh, would motivate people to look more closely at rainfall over Northeast India. And with that, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you for an interesting talk. Uh, so I can see whether there are any queries or questions we have at, from the audience. Uh, we do have one queer question uh, from Madhu is asking. Uh, he's saying that uh, uh, what is the rain spell? So he typed it separately. So he would like to know the rain spell duration uh, over the central India and northeast. I'm not very sure what he means by rain spell duration, but he clarified it, saying significantly longer spells northeast during three months so followed to witness similar spell lands during monsoon over central India is the key point. Is that an observation he made from your presentation or a background information? I'm also not sure. So that's what he would like to know from you, especially the duration of the rain or the spell of the rain. So do you have any anything to comment on that? Uh I'm not sure if I understood correctly, but uh, I think it is related to this figure. I can just try to explain what I did. But uh, so these are just. Uh, yeah, I think I think I, I didn't get the uh, question properly. Yeah, so he's basically asking that uh, the, how the spells of these rains are different between Northeast and Central India, not just the the rain, average rain over the monsoon. He's talking okay. about the, the duration. Yeah, I think this diagnostic is not uh, capable of uh, identifying how yeah, actually he's clarifying further in YouTube. He's asking for this plot, the x-axis is the hours. What is y-axis? That's his question. Y-axis is the uh, total rain accumulated during a rain spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but x-axis is not hour, it is actually days. Days. 
the day the oh okay madhu it's not our it's day probably the idea of something close to 25 24 we thought maybe our oh, it's a day all right yeah so yeah so it's not, i didn't i didn't put any threshold so these are just the non anything above zero so it can be very small rain but the whole idea is to identify if the rain happened for a longer period in terms of days so if so i was so only thing that was in my mind like if it was just isolated thunderstorms then i would just get many uh, events with just one or two days but not uh, not very long uh, spells so right okay so there's no other question as of now from the audience so uh, i do have a question because i was listening to this topic and i'm not an expert in this see we do know that northeast and central india are uh, not in phase especially in uh, relation to elino and to some extent maybe pdo as well so if that is in hold then why uh, is this pre monsoon rain is a pre indicator of indian monsoon I mean, three months of rain of northeast is an indicator to Indian monsoon. When these two regions, as such, have an anti-correlation to each other. Yeah. So, I mean, the uh, there is this uh, catch that large scale always tries to, due to whatever physical reason or whatever explanation, the El Nino. Uh, pattern tries to suppress seasonal monsoon rainfall but that el nino pattern because it's not restricted to monsoon season it's there uh, during the pre monsoon as well and that circulation interacts with the orography of northeastern india and when it interacts and produces rain then that hits at the whole troposphere and when it happens then within the large scale forcing there is this regional forcing which comes into play in terms of rainfall over northeast india during pre monsoon and that probably weakens the large scale signal which is trying to suppress uh, the monsoon rainfall over india so that's that's where i uh, so i think i'll have to go to uh, this figure that this large scale circulation which tries to suppress monsoon rainfall it, it it produces a warmer troposphere by interacting with the mountains of northeast and this warmer troposphere now within the large scale signal uh, it just weakens the whole large scale signal because now it is uh, getting an opposing opposing forcing due to uh, or opposing regional forcing and that's the reason why although we get some of the years which are below average but not they are not below one standard deviation which is are like the objective definition of a drought so probably i mean that would be my explanation i mean uh, the explanation that i have presented in this paper that it's the regional uh signal which opposes the large scale signal the same large scale signal which initially was meant to suppress monsoon rainfall now between central india and the large scale there is this mountains and north east india rainfall uh which is weakening the whole large scale signal all right any other question from the panelists uh, uh, yeah. interesting topic See now, if you look at the correlation of northeast uh, uh, pre-monsoon rainfall with SST over the globe, mm -hmm. you know you see a lot of uh, warming uh, basin warming in the Indian Ocean also. Yes, it is not the typical pattern of uh, positive PDO, PDO and El Nino. So you don't see a basin-wide warming. So the cases which you say that. the central india is getting more rain during the positive pdo and negative uh, elino 
see, see in these cases definitely the indian ocean might be playing a major role in uh, you know giving the uh, uh, normal or excess rainfall over central india rather than you know the argument which you say that north east india pre monsoon rainfall and the associated uh, the tropospheric warming mm-hmm. uh, suppress the large scale forcing so what you what, what is your uh, uh, thought on that because if you see this is not the ideal pattern of uh, indian ocean temperature during a pd positive pd o el nino phase yeah yeah so uh, what you were so this uh, is like a positive pd o uh, sst anomalies and okay this el nino doesn't have uh the indian ocean this figure but there is uh some basin wide warming but i think i wouldn't rule out the point you mentioned that the indian ocean also might play some role to identify that probably some modeling experiment with this kind of forcing or like el nino type uh, pure el nino type forcing or a canonical and lino type forcing with and without the north east india mountains so that uh, i mean i wanted to perform that kind of experiment but uh, it wasn't easy because of the topic i'm targeting it's very subtle in the sense that uh, the scales of the mountains are very small given the resolution of the models so i had to use a very high resolution model and that too uh, with uh, like uh, reliable fidelity in 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 simulating the mountain precipitation which is another issue in the climate models so as i said uh, this uh, i hope to motivate people to look at the north east india rainfall be- simply because Uh, there is a lot of rainfall happening during, during pre monsoon and people have been working like to see how that can affect central indian monsoon rainfall so it it would be interesting to see the relative roles of indian ocean as well as because these are all indian ocean or pacific these are all large scale drivers but how the regional forcings would uh, play a role inside that was the yeah. whole like yeah. right so that is the, exactly the point you know that the regional feature so how it could you know we can the large scale features mm-hmm. so that is uh, that, anyway you can think see you have done some uh, regression equations you know instead yes. of the pre monsoon uh, northeast monsoon uh, northeast pre monsoon uh, if you say for example arabian sea sst or indian ocean sst you may get yeah. a better uh, better you know result yeah process. see another another one you know see if you see the uh, the relationship between your uh, north uh, the pre monsoon rainfall and uh, the central okay. india rainfall so there 40s and 50s there is a large change right in the correlation is yeah you can see that is a that there is a uh, andy like the correlation mm-hmm. between them Yes. So they are not matching in the 40s and 50s mm-hmm. you can see that right yes yes yeah but uh, exactly that same thing happened uh, in your later figure you know that uh, the monsoon northeast monsoon and central indian monsoon relationship mm-hmm. you know there is some some time you showed uh, there is a positive relation you, you remember the 40s and that is 40s and 50s yes yes Uh, that is the only period the correlation between the central india and the northeast india monsoon is positive uh-huh. the other yes. period are it is negative and uh-huh. not this next one next one uh, uh, you showed a, the no I, i think it was there's one figure you showed the correlation between central india and no, not this one central india and Uh, northeast monsoon central india and uh, yeah, there is a, you showed that negative correlation right yeah the correlation is negative 
that was yeah. a figure later the, okay you can, you, you can see that you can see that it is always negative and exactly vinu was also asking about that central indian rainfall and northeast uh, monsoon rainfall they are negatively correlated okay you can you can ask me to stop which uh, i'm not getting which no, no, go back go, go ahead go ahead so, so should i again yeah there is little more more you have to go ahead okay. at the end you go at the towards the end the last oh, figure that yeah. here, here here this figure you see <laughs> exactly the 40s and 50s no Mm -hmm. you see there is some some sort of a positive relationship between the northeast monsoon rainfall and the central indian rain yes the yeah. monsoon yeah. see other other period you see you see there is something either the data issues or uh, some problem. otherwise the relationship is negative only. yes yeah yeah this central india uh, and northeast india during monsoon overall if i calculate it is uh, negative and uh, the whole point was to show the multi decadal oscillation uh, between uh, uh, the uh, of the relation so i don't know what's happening that there is this um, oscillatory feature in this relationship uh, but this is what i started with correct but anyway that that has weakened after 50s yes good sir see like uh, uh, you know do you see any northeast monsoon uh, rainfall impact during the years when you think that the pre monsoon uh, uh, north northeast pre monsoon contributes to the central indian rainfall or suppresses the large scale features do you see any any change in rainfall over the uh, northeast monsoon season oh okay so you are asking uh, pre monsoon over northeast affects central india and then that affect that might affect uh, rainfall over northeast during monsoon right, right yeah i have not looked at i tried to uh, like i plotted several correlations and several maps uh, trying to figure out a link that if it like it starts uh, with pre monsoon over northeast and then goes to central india and then it affects the whole area which includes northeast as well but i couldn't find anything uh, very conclusive or uh, yeah i couldn't understand uh, it fully i tried to plot the correlation between or the relationship between northeast india during pre monsoon and monsoon if they have something uh suggestive but i couldn't find it i mean there is definitely something but i couldn't find it yet okay okay so thank you thank you thank you yeah sir start to finish ah i already i think i asked a lot of question earlier but i forgot what all i asked anyway yeah. <laughs> so I still and I asked a good question. Can you go back to that um, that mechanism that you? Yeah, yeah. Hold on there. So, so this whole thing you mm -hmm. you are kind of proposing or hypothesizing whatever, but you are not you have not shown any analysis in support of this, right? No. So this is what I anticipate. It is your it is your just speculation, right? It is just speculation. yeah now here so question is if you want to prove this speculation true you have to do some agcm experiment where you have to prescribe the sst anomalies you know different scenarios as you explained okay yeah and then you have to demonstrate whether it really happens that is number 1 yes number 2 that is more fundamental to my mind what is coming so you basically so your pre monsoon is march april may right not just may not just may that's another yeah. okay fine so now uh, so and also you said that uh, it is a barotropic uh, convergence right up to 200 hectopascal mm -hmm. so that's okay fine now now point is that is, is there any paper or anywhere where it is shown 
is large scale circulations that is interacting with the regional uh, uh, mountain can actually modulate a planetary scale uh, phenomena like a monsoon tropospheric temperature gradient, which I should say is planetary because it almost touches my mascarine high to Tibet, right? So, yeah. so the scale wise, the heating, convergence, divergence, whatever is happening, it may be of, you know, one or two order smaller, right? Now, mm -hmm. this, whether it is, I mean, this interaction basically, whether it really can, I mean, if I give a, this small heating perturbations anywhere, mm -hmm. can its response be so huge that it can modulate a gigantic relation like monsoon opposing another force driver which is yeah. sitting in pa Pacific, you know, like video and uh, so, so this is kind of from the physics point of view scale, which is yes. becoming, I'm not able to visualize it, but yeah, can you, so this is the only question I will ask now, we'll discuss later offline, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that is like what you said from physics point of view, I mean, how how much is enough or how much is significant enough? So probably this plot would help you to. Uh, so this is the box of the tropospheric temperature, the northern box of tropospheric temperature gradient. So I took the rainfall over this and uh, divided it by the rainfall over northeast. And it is more than 10% mm -hmm. in May. So the question is whether this 10% is enough or not. Yeah, and it's not in May, you are saying now. It's not in much April, May, right? Yeah, but with it, the rainfall is much of a diagnostics to what physics does to the system. But yeah, it's as such should be much of a large scale and that too. Uh, see, rainfall can be of very intense because of the orographic local force. Mm. So that uh, that uh, guy uh, that count you cannot justify to the answer that Dr. Parto asked in, in my yeah, view. It's it's not a, a justification. It's more of a uh, indicative of what uh, could possibly happen. Like this quantum of rainfall, which is significantly huge, and that. Another question that I had faced during the completion of the review that whether it's May or whether it's March, April, May, I just took the objective definition of pre-monsoon, like uh, taking March, April, May. And another question is uh, whether it the the whole system has a memory of March, April, May, or is what or is it just instantaneous May? But uh, what Partha was to us, is it, is it big enough? Or strong enough? S or strong enough? Honestly, I don't know. What I speculated seems to be true in terms of monsoon onset. But again, it's a very few days of early monsoon onset. If you look at true and false cases, the blue and uh, red curves don't so there are like few days, but then monsoon onset itself has a deviation, standard deviation of seven days. So even five, uh, eight days is almost one standard deviation of monsoon onset variability. But uh, yeah, I mean, I speculated this and the results kind of uh, uh, are consistent with what I speculated. But then I was handicapped uh, because of the model limitations and the computational resources that I had to do this modeling study. To do to to remove northeast mountains would be my first idea of doing a modeling study that I have the uh, SST signal. I forced the AGCM by SST and uh, down on and off the northeast mountains. But for that, I had to have a model uh, fine enough, uh, which I didn't have or I don't have yet. But yeah, I mean, that's a question still open, like whether it's strong enough. 
Now it's okay. consistent Thank you. with what I expected, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, one way to look at is that in the observations, there if that is impactful those mountain groups in this tropical monsoon system, you should see some waves emanating from those regions in the observations. So that could be the one indication. I mean, in model would definitely deal with waves only, right? That's mm -hmm. communicate the, the whatever you perturbation you do to the system. So in the observation also, it should have some some kind of waves from that heat source in the pre monsoon, whether it emanates during the different phases of you know El Nino or PDO, and how that carry over to the last phase. Right? It's very it's it's very tricky question. Okay. Yeah, but I think one way can be to look for stationary waves. I mean, if the heating is persistent and it's capable of producing some large scale response, uh, like modulating monsoon, then probably this heating over Northeast India, that can be one way of looking at it. Like you said, look for waves, which uh, are they just emitted and uh, dissipated or they are there for some time. OK, thank you. I think uh, we crossed over an hour, actually. So there is some question uh, from has, YouTube. Yeah, there Sita, is a question from comment. YouTube. Yeah, no just comment. to add the discussion, maxima of TT doesn't coincide with rainfall maxima. In general, in general, over monsoon region. That's what he's saying. Just a comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's OK, so if uh, no other questions, then we can conclude the session. Thanking uh, Vidya for taking initiative to give a good talk. And uh, thanks, Pastorji, for uh, coordinating with me. And <laughs> thanks to all the audience. Thank yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Vidya. The best. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Take care. Thank you.